A string represents a collection of bytes. The capital S string is actually a struct. String is a very common collection to use in your Rust programs, and it's a part of the standard library's collections. So let's take a look at it. My name is Ricky, and welcome to the dev method. So we have the lowercase str string, which is referred to as like a string slice. And it's usually used in its borrowed form, so with the ampersand str. Strings are UTF-8 encoded. String literals are actually stored in your binary for your Rust program. Capital S string, the struct, is a growable, mutable, owned UTF-8 encoded string. So when we refer to strings in Rust, we're sometimes talking about the capital S string or the lowercase str, or sometimes even a string slice, so the ampersand lowercase str. We'll be primarily talking about the capital S string today. There's many operations you could do on a string, and if you watch to the end of the video, I'm going to show you a way to concatenate a bunch of strings together with some sort of common separator in between them. So let's look at our first example. This example shows just creating a new mutable string. So we got string, colon, colon, new, creates an empty string. Now keep in mind, it's not the same as this, because that's the ampersand str string. We want the capital string. And just for review, mute means uh, we get any mutable functions or associated methods on s here. So in this example, we have uh, data, the variable data here, and it is a uh, ampersand str. Now, if we want to move it into a uppercase s string, then we can use this to string. And uh, this is also the same thing here. So you could take the the literal and then call to string on it. You don't have to store it into a variable first. So you got a couple options. And if you want to go directly from the string literal to the capital S string, uh, we have a from method that you could use. So this associated function on string just takes in a, uh, a string literal. So here are a bunch of examples of UTF-8 encoded strings. So we're going to be talking about this, but I just want to show you some characters from different languages. Um, I did notice trying to traverse them in VS Code seems a little weird for me, but it might not be for you. Uh, going left to right, for example, doesn't always go exactly the way that I thought it would. Let's update our string. So if we have a mutable string and we want to push new information onto it, we actually have a way to do that. And if we have a let mute s here, so we'll have foo, but if we push bar onto it, we'll have foo bar all is one. Now something to keep in mind here is that uh, this is actually a um, ampersand str. So we're actually taking that type and pushing it onto the capital S string. We have a method for that. So just to show you here, um, line 17, this again is a uh, the ampersand str string. And pushing this onto the capital S string, it does not take ownership of it. So that's what makes this a, a valuable associated function or method to use. And if we want to use S2 afterwards, that's OK with the borrow checker from Rust. Now, if we want to do LOL, we can actually push a character on to the string as well. So there's another push, and it's just regular push, and then you give your character there. So let's look at concatenating strings. There's a couple different ways we can do it. This first example here shows S1, and then we have S2, both the same kind of string. But then we have S1 plus, and then we have the uh, reference to S2. So S1 is actually like getting sucked in, and the ownership is now going into this S3. So I want you to take a moment and maybe go back to the video about ownership and borrowing in Rust. Um, note that there's a couple different ways to uh, do our associated methods. So in this case, I have the definition here on line 24. And so add takes in self. So again, it's not a borrow self with just the ampersand or a borrow mute. It's actually self, and that's it. Now, under the hood, this operator here, this uh, plus, is actually calling this add method on string. 
So this means after line 18, S1 is actually not valid anymore. We can't use it. It gets dropped or we, we don't have a reference to it anymore. Now S2, the this is basically turning into, I'll show you here, this. It's like the same thing. And then it's being added in. So that's how we can reference S2 afterwards, and that's OK. So let's look at two examples back to back. Um, this has two main methods, so just ignore that for now. It's just for an example. Um, but here's S1, S2, S3. We can concatenate them all together and put them in as S1. Now here's the thing. S1 has been moved because that's that and again where it takes self, so it takes ownership and puts it into S. So we can no longer use S1. If we want to get around that, there's actually a macro here, format, exclamation point. Um, you put in your format of what you want it to look like. And then you have S1, S2, S3. And they actually do not take ownership, but makes a new string and then stores that in S. So here's something that might trip you up when looking at Rust. You might think, uh, just like an array or a vector um, in other languages or in Rust, you want to index into the string. So you want to get like the first thing out of the string. So in this example, it looks like S1. If you want to get the first thing, you can just do like what we have here and then store that value into H. So I just ran cargo check on this, and we can see that we actually have an issue with this code. So it's saying string cannot be indexed with an integer. So to understand why this is a problem, let's talk about the inner workings of a string. So what you need to know about the string is that it's basically a vector of u8 integers. So vec u8, just like that on line 14. So this string here, the H, the O, L, and A, that's four bytes encoded in UTF-8. Now this next string that we're storing in hello, notice all these different characters here. It's actually 24 bytes. It doesn't maybe look like that. It's not showing and displaying it to us like that, or it doesn't seem like it. Maybe we don't know the language. But we have here this as 24 bytes encoded in UTF-8. So it's two bytes per scalar value. So if you think now, well, if I want to get like that first thing out of hello, what would I get? Again, let's do cargo check and see what this code comes up with. So again, we still can't uh, index into this array. But what would that first byte be? That's kind of what we're getting at here. And the way to do that is actually this comment and out code. So I'm going to show you that. Let's run cargo check. Well, look at that. Uh, it told me to just change it to as bytes because I said two bytes. My mistake. Cargo check. Yeah. All right, so it works. Now let's do cargo run. So that first byte, if you could see that at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, um, looks like 208. That's the first byte. Let's take a look at another string here. So in line 17, I got my string. I'm storing it in hello. And I can get it as bytes, and I can get it as characters. So there's two different ways here. Um, now, the thing is, is that these are separated into what are called uh, graphene clusters. We're not covering that here. And there's actually not anything in the standard library that helps you traverse over clusters in Rust. But if you want to check crates.io, there's going to be something out there that helps you do that. I'll also put this link in the description if you guys want to check it out later. But well, let's run this code and just see what the difference is between the two. So notice uh, we got that first byte, the second byte, and so on. Um, and then we also have here chars. I'm going to do one more thing here. Let's do uh, length. So what would the length of the string be? So 18. 18 bytes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 18. But then notice the, the characters here, as they're being collected, they don't all display as maybe you would expect. But that is to be expected with how UTF-8 strings are encoded. Now let's say we want to slice into the string. Strings are actually just vectors of U8 integers. Um, so here I have hello as just a string literal. Um, and then we're going to get a slice of it, so just like the first four bytes, let's say, and store that into S. 
Now here's the issue. We're actually going to get a panic at runtime if we did something that was different than four. So this changes with all your different strings. So that's why this becomes a dangerous operation. This will actually, line 22, this will actually crash at runtime. It's just something the compiler can't check for you. Now again, if we want to iterate over our strings, uh, there's two different ways to do it. You can use uh, get, you know, iterating and getting every character, or you can get them as bytes. So let me run this just so you guys get an idea of what this looks like. All right, so each line, something new. So here's our characters, something new every line. Here again, it's not exactly what you might expect. Then here's the bytes. So there you go. Now let's say you want to take a couple different um, strings and put them all together, but in between each section, you want some sort of slash. So this is very common if you're trying to build up a URL and you have a lot of slashes in between your segments. So if we take a look here, I have a vector of strings. And then if I do dot join and then give it another string, it'll actually put these all together. So it'll, in the end, it'll be first slash second slash third. So no slash at the end, no slash at the beginning. So there's my final output right there. So if you want to look into string and learn more about it, you can go on the Rust website, doc.rust-lang.org, and uh, you just do a search here for string, and you'll get um, std string, but then there's std string with, and then a capital S string. That's the one we were talking about. And you can look at all of its different methods, um, all of its different functions, and it explains a lot of the same things that I just explained for you here. So thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's anything additional you'd like to see about strings, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best I can to accommodate. Otherwise, have a good one.